my gut response to someone who's been in the industry for a while is always to say, you got to do it this way. But what I've seen is that some people's creative spirits do get dampened. So it's a, it's a delicate balance because believe me, I've had too many screenplays that are like, what are the first steps in writing a screenplay? It does depend on the story that you want to tell. And it does depend on the individual. So one of the things I believe is applying cookie cutter sort of uh, techniques to any story or any writer or individual never really works. So a lot of books will tell you about like, oh, you've got to, um, you know, do an outline first and the outline needs to look like this. This needs to be the first act, second act, third act, cookie cutter, damn, make your thing and that's it, right? Um, but I think every story has its own individual genesis within you as a writer. You as a writer are, are an individual. And so when it appears and how it appears is very specific to the person. So some stories, the first step might be, I'm just going to write some scenes because I'm, I'm seeing these scenes in my head. I'm going to write some scenes. Out. You end up with a big messy they call it you know, they're gardening they're not architectures you know it's not architecture it's gardening but some scripts are like oh i've got this great plot of the story and then you do the plot first and then you write the scenes so i do think it depends on the sub on the on the um person writing what the story is how it comes to you and how you create it however i would say that at some point if you're writing a feature film actually even if you're writing a tv series probably more important if you're writing a tv series Scene cards on the walls at some point to plan your story is very important. And that is vital because if you're just gardening and writing scenes for the sake of writing scenes, you're going to just make a big messy garden. At some point you need to go in there with the you know, weed trimmer and just make sure that there's actually a story there because it's grown into this thing and you don't even know what it is anymore. So I'd say the first step for writing a screenplay probably is being honest about yourself, the story you want to tell, and truthful in the way that you tell it. And so that might be doing a scene outline first, or it might be writing scenes first. But be honest with it and know that both have their own sort of limitations. But it's to know yourself as a writer, actually, I think is, is important. Okay, if you're a writer for hire, mm -hmm. uh, you may not be maybe as into the story, it wouldn't be something that you've chosen, mm -hmm. but you would need probably way more structure at Absolutely. that point. Absolutely, so for many years I wrote sitcom back in South Africa, I don't know how many episodes I wrote, and that was me being a writer for hire, and that was literally like, there's no time for gardening. It's just structure, and I had a, co I had a writing partner, we would meet, we would beat out it, we would do a scene outline, you know, beat by beat, what happens in each scene. We would send it to the production company. They would write back with some of their feedback. We'd do a second scene outline. Then we'd send that back. Then we'd flesh out the scenes. There'd be a feedback on those scenes, and then you'd have a script. So I think when you're a writer for hire, it is very different. So you, you can't be true to your own creative idea when you're a writer. You can try, but you probably won't get very far. Um, I do think that that's when the structure works. And for me, scening, scene outlines are really good at that point. As a matter of fact, one of the things I found with my students is that a lot of people resist them because they feel unnatural as a creative person. You know, you don't really want to think of everything. I don't know how it's going to end. I'm starting the story. I'm exploring this world. But if you force yourself to do a scene outline, it helps so much because once you've got a scene outline, you can share it with other people and they can give you feedback on it, which is very important. And so you can actually see whether the story works. So I'm contradicting myself a little bit. I'm saying like, yeah, let's be creative writers, but scene outlines, I'm all for them. I think it really helps to just beat through the story. A feature film is a massive beast. We think we can hold it in our heads. We really can't. We have to get it onto the page. So my first sort of gut response when you said, how do you start writing a screenplay? I'm like, put words on a page, very important. And then put words in a page in a particular order and then put those words in an order that makes sense for a feature film. And then that's how you write a feature film. Easy. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> it's not easy. Is, is that how we quote grow up as writers that we are willing to have some structure? Because you know, there's so many creative people, and they don't want rules. They don't want to be told what time to show up. Oh, there's going to be these worlds and time travel. But then it's just a big mess. It, it's it's like a big trip somewhere, you know, and it's not really a story. Yeah. I do think that that's where we grow up as writers. Um, I must say there is something that happens that I've seen happen at film schools um, where, and of course at the David Lynch MFA, because David Lynch is our sort of patron, 
um, we push back against this a little bit where everyone's like, you've got to do it this way. This is the way to write a screenplay. You know, these are the rules. You've got to be on time. You can't do crazy things with time travel. I'm like, well, David Lynch wrote Ronnie Rocket, which is the script that was never produced, maybe for a reason, because the script's all over the place and it's mad, but he did that. You know, and people are like, well, he did that. And I'm like, okay, well, if he did that, maybe you should be able to do it too. So I think that there, sometimes the, like my, my gut response to someone who's been in the industry for a while is always to say, you got to do it this way. But what I've seen is that some people's creative spirits do get dampened. So it's a, it's a delicate balance because believe me, I've had too many screenplays that are like, oh, it's in the Jurassic period. And then we flash <laughs> forward and it's like, oh my gosh, you have no idea what's going on, do you? Um, so yeah, it's a balance between the two actually, I'd say, is that, uh, but we do when we grow up as writers, like that fast growing up I did writing sitcom for those years, that was very fast structure, structure, structure. As a matter of fact, now recently, I've had to actually let go of that a little bit and seen, okay, wait, there's space for the creativity within a screenplay. I, as a film professor, very often used to do like, oh, it's got to be formatted in this way. Get rid of all your ings. Um, make sure it's, you only write what the camera can see and the microphone can pick up. You know, as a film professor, there's um, gradable things you can impose on a script. And it makes it easy for a film professor to grade a script because now, you know, this person was writing too many internal states, etc. But I think there's a softening. I've even seen it in current scripts, actually. In a lot of the screenplay, the more recent screenplays, there's a softening around these rules, which allows more space for creativity. So yes, it's all a balance. You know, I've just when you were talking, it popped into my head like someone who has teetered with workaholism, mm. and I'm not to apply addiction to, mm -hmm. to some of this, but sure. I, I kind of am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that the, the, at times people are more rigid and nose to the grindstone and they can't relax and they can't have any play. And then other times they become, they, the pendulum swings the other way. I wonder if that's the same with some of these writers. Mm, that's a, it's really interesting that you bring up, you know, like addiction, um, particularly something like a process addiction. So if you talk about something like eating, that is a, we have to eat to survive. And there's various other forms of addiction, like love addiction or sex addiction, which is, you know, these are things we do as human beings. And writing is something we do as writers. Now, the thing with um, like an eating disorder is finding the balance, right? You don't want to go too far where you don't eat anything. You don't want to go too far that you eat too much. It's being honest about what you need and, and find that middle ground. And I do think the same is possibly applicable to writing, where you don't want to go into the world of just making a mess on the page. And if you go too rigid, it becomes it loses its soul in a way. And so it's a little bit, anyway, it's interesting that you mentioned that as addiction because it is maybe a way of, of looking at the writing process to find the balance, particularly around like a process addiction. Yeah. How early should a screenwriter attempt to tap into their memory well? Oh. So there's various phases that can happen. Um, it can happen once you've got your actual, you know, first rough draft, you can go back at it and it and look into your memory well. I'll speak on that in a second. But the first thing is in the moment that you're creating. So actually the memory well should be active and alive in the moment that you're creating. So when you're writing a scene that is, um, for example, a, uh, I don't know, I always use the graveyard scene for some reason, but I'll go back there, is, you know, you're setting a scene in a graveyard or if, you know, someone's being buried and you could just write, make things up from all the other wells, movies that you've seen, you could make something up or you could think about oh, wait a minute, what graves have I seen in my life? What graveyards? Have... Oh, there was that one in a desert somewhere. Oh, that was quite cool. And, and then so, and then you write from that perspective. Or if you're writing a scene where somebody wins, like Wimbledon or something, and you think, wow, that character's feeling really happy right now. How do I get myself as a writer into that happy space to be able to express that feeling of happiness? I can imagine myself into a character. That's what writers do. It's the magical thing that we can somehow do. Or I can think about when was I really happy? Oh, I was sailing that boat and there was water everywhere and the sun was glistening. And oh, let me write a scene where the sun's glistening in Wimbledon and he takes the water and he pours it over his head and it's like, yeah, I've won Wimbledon. And, and that emotion, so it is important when writing to access our emotions. And one of the ways we can do that is through the memory well. So as a matter of fact, the memory well is normally applied at the beginning of the writing process and in the moment of creativity. However, there's a second period when you've got a script written then you can actually relook at it and go, okay, I've set the scene in a coffee shop where they break up. Interesting. Hmm. Where was I broken up with before? Oh, in a car. Oh yeah, on the edge of a, a um, oh, why didn't they break up in a car? Would that be better for the story? 
Oh, it would actually, because they can park the car and then the sea's in the distance and he's a long distance swimmer. I don't know, making something up here. But you know, you can then reapply your memories to each scene actually to make the location of each scene better or the emotion in each scene better. So yeah, it kind of happens on both ends of the creative uh, spectrum if you're willing to go there. Sometimes, by the way, all of these things happen absolutely naturally for a writer, most of the time. But if your script is lacking a little something and there's not, and you're not resonating with it and the readers aren't resonating with it as much as you'd like, you can definitely consciously, actively go into your memories and try and infuse each uh, scene. So a friend of mine, uh, or a friend, actually he's a friend now, but he's an ex-student, he wrote a scene uh, where these characters were meeting and he thought they were meeting in a, I don't know where they were, some random place. And he said, oh, a restaurant. He remembered ordering off the kiddies menu when he had no money because they were very poor. And he put that in the scene. It worked so well. Suddenly, it, it, the scene had something fresh that I'd never really seen before where these, they, they try and order off the kiddies menu. You can't order that because you're not a kid or whatever. And there was a funny scene, but, but it spoke to the poverty that the characters were in. So that's how it works. Yeah.